Dear participants, colleagues, and honorable chief guest, STI was given the prestigious task of training the pilot STP for the MCMC of the four weeks by the Cabinet Committee on Civil Services Reforms. The driving force behind that decision was the rationale to refresh and streamline the knowledge of the participants and impart training in the fields most relevant to the job description of the participants. Ladies and gentlemen, STI is the leading institute dedicated for professional training and capacity building of officers who work in the ministries, divisions, and other organizations in the federal government. STI administration was very glad to join hands with the establishment division to envisage and plan the courses and topics to be taught and discussed at our training institution. The specialized training program for the officers of the MCMC conducted at STI is designed to equip future policymakers and managers with the knowledge and skills required in decision making and analysis in the higher tiers of the government. This course examines the governance and development regimes which provide policy frameworks for knowledge creation and its application in various ministries and divisions of the federal government. The areas covered are finance, economic affairs, IT skills, smart governance, climate change, and public policy options relevant to the subjects and domains of the government of Pakistan, including communication and interprovincial coordination. Soft skills like personal development, leadership skills, anger management, and setting smart goals in professional and public, uh, public life were also included. Although the course concentrates on primary federal subjects, references were also made to the international practices and linkages between the government of Pakistan and international institutions. The effort is to connect new knowledge with practical options in public policy and governance in the light of the futuristic requirements as well as contrasting other domestic practices and regimes where relevant. All the activities and material were based as close as possible upon contemporary public sector and legal developments. These resources are designed to illustrate and illustrate the practical relevance of the topics studied. Mid-career officers in the federal secretariat require skills and aptitude to attend policy work and to undertake tasks that involve linkages with various stakeholders. New knowledge. and the new practices that are relevant for their progress and career growth, growth were also included. The objective, is to, the objective is to contribute to achievements of capabilities which are developed across the duration of a program of all the officers in the course. The aspiration is to develop equipped and focused officers who are rigorous specialists, capable of leadership and professional practices in the federal government. We believe that upon graduation, officers would have a high level of knowledge and cap capacity for responsible thinking undermined by the ethical professional practices. They would be able to harness and manage and communicate information effectively and work with the other uh, federal government organizations in collaboration. They would be an experienced problem solvers and critical thinkers with a national perspective and the potential for innovative leadership. Their participants, although Secretariat Training Institute is the rendezvous for professional development of civil servants working in the federal government, all courses and activities take place usually at its premises situated at Islamabad. The training of, however, the 30th MCMC participants was held online from 14 December 2020 to 8th of January 2021. Under the threat of the ongoing pandemic and the regard for the safety of the officers of the federal government, it was agreed to conduct the program online. It was decided to proceed with Zoom for the sessions due to its ease of use for the participants among the choices available like WebEx, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, etc. The review of the courses will also be done and the suggestions of the course review committee will also be incorporated in the coming courses, inshallah. I would like now to request Mr. Shehjan to say a few words about the participants, please. From the participants' point of view. Mr. Shehjan, sir, please. Thank you, Ms. Madiha. With the glorious name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful, Your Highness, the Director General STI Islamabad, 
honorable chief guest esteemed faculty sti and my dear participants of a specialized training program 30th mcmc good morning i feel extremely privileged to have been given an opportunity to say a few words on behalf of the participants regarding the course in question first of all i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the director general sti and his sagacious faculty for arranging a tremendous course during the catastrophic wave of pandemic covid-19 credit surely goes to the sti team and its capable leadership for having managed the course online i am personally very much thankful as i found them deadly active gen to me qualified enthusiastic almost a four and i regard these memories as priceless assets thinking about the course which fills me with a little bit mingle feelings of happiness and sorrow happiness in a sense of working with difficult situation and overcoming challenges but sadness in a sense of leaving the institution and not having such learning atmosphere anymore regarding the course i would briefly say i personally thought that mcmc was a course in which one would enjoy as a prince getting up in the morning on one's free will having kingly breakfasts then listening some lecture for fun then moving for tea break having some chat with participants after a while attending lunch ceremony and then going home with joyful memories for the next day but for heaven's sake what i found was totally the opposite at the end of the course i came to know that mcmc polishes one's personality re-energizes one's dormant capabilities the what what vitalizes one for the forthcoming challenges teach is one the technique how to act as a dominant leader at the same time educate one how to perform as a submissive subordinate it teaches how to relax in a tense situation and how to resist under this training has not only deepened our understanding of challenges but it has broadened our vision and insight to overcome boldly the infinite complexities of service this teaching has taught us to discover the dimensions of new learning and practice of traits as to build the strong future of the country upon undoubtedly we have discovered both how much there is to learn and how many profound questions remain unanswered and unasked in a nutshell i would say that mcmc teaches multi dimensional aspects and techniques of official business during the course what really elevated our mental capabilities were relevant to day to day lectures and subsequently question answer sessions it enabled us how to interact various lectures by prominent personalities covering various aspects of life sharing their great skills and experiences of their lives undoubtedly uplifted our knowledge and left us unforgettable impression on us computer literacy was really very vital it acquainted us with working knowledge of computer it enabled us to make use of computer for enhancing our efficiency and effectiveness individually and at the organizational forum simulation was undoubtedly vital it gave us a chance to work together and understand one another it gave us courage to participate 
though simulation needs visiting the concerned departments in person for understanding the given situation. It was very interesting exercise, though laborious. Online courses were really very supportive and beneficial. We were, we were not tied down to a fixed schedule. It gave us power over how we could delegate our time towards different activities. It enabled us to access to information, listening to videos and audios and doing exercises. All these courses are not available to us in our local, in our locality. Synopsis writing was found extremely improving our uh, improving of our proficiency to understand, to summarize, and to identify the main important message. It developed our listening skills. It enhanced in it enhances individuals' potential to sum up the entire proceedings in comprehensible way. Reading comprehension helped us learn how to read in between the lines. It enhanced the ability of conceptual study and dragged us to grasp something in a glance. It made us understand viewpoints of the author. It was associated with finding meaning in the text. It was an exercise of inference to figure out the real hidden meaning behind the shallow surface of the viewpoint of the author. It made possible to interpret text and find relevancy with the given topic. At the end, I would like to thank STI for having arranged such a significant course in a professional and tremendous way. Thank you very much. Now over to Madiha. Thank you so much, Sherjan sir, for the insightful and thoughtful words. I would now request our Director General, Secretariat Training Institute, to please say a few words on this occasion. Sir, please. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Namadhu nasalila Rasul al-Karim. Honorable Chief Guest, Excellency Osman Haider Dogar. United Nations Nairobi, respected faculty members, participants of 30th Mid-Career Management course, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you here on this online rendezvous. Especially, I'm very much delighted to have with us Excellency Usman Heather, who has rightly joined us from Nairobi, and I can see the envious background in which he is sitting, and we just send heartiest felicitations and congratulations him on his work, which he is doing, marvelous work he is doing there. Ladies and gentlemen, life is about small accomplishments, small steps that we take on day-to-day -day basis, collectively become a long journey that we usually remember in life. Every step that we take towards the challenges gives us a new destination. And every challenge becomes a story if we deal it well. I'm sure that every good story can create a history. And this is the reason why all of us are here today in this online rendezvous that we have created for you. Let us deliberate on our work and let us dream about a better future. We were challenged by the circumstances created by the pandemic in the beginning of year 2020, but we decided not to stop working. And that is how we became the pioneer training academy in Pakistan that conducted the first online specialized training program for the occupational groups of officers belonging to civil service. Again, confidence was posed in us when Government of Pakistan gave us the opportunity to conduct the specialized training program for the mid-career management participants. And I'm so much delighted that 24 officers who were part of the 30th mid-career management course are graduating today from the Secretary of Training Institute, Islamabad. 
I want to thank all the participant officers in this course for their work, interest, and involvement in spite of all the limitations. As I said earlier, limitations only test you and your skills. If you keep on moving, you will not lose the balance. This is what our institute did in these testing times. And this is what our participants did in this course. Many congratulations. If you ask me to summarize the biggest lesson of this course, I would say that you need to make yourself relevant to your work. Civil service has changed and you need to change according to the requirements of time and age. It is no longer a job of a journalist. Civil servants who are jack of all are now a clear threat to the governance and economy of the country as decisions need to be well supported by research and professionalism. All those who sit here as graduates of this course would see new challenges at the workplace in the coming years. I assure you that you will not be able to deliver if you kept on relying on your wisdom and discretion only. Certainly, you need to develop expertise in your relevant areas of work, and you need to know how to conduct research. This is your duty to find out what best suits your people and your country and reflect these findings in your decisions. If you will not do it, you will become irrelevant. I'm so much delighted and honored that Excellency Mr. Usman Hader Dogar is here with us as our chief guest. He is the most pertinent person in today's discussion as he would tell you which way the wind is blowing and what measures we in Pakistan need to take to improve our governance system. He would enlighten you as to how important those sustainable development goals are and how important those sustainable development goals have become for member countries. And you need to ask yourself why those SDGs are not so important for you and your respective ministries and departments in Pakistan. Governance is no more only keeping eye on law and order situation. It is about creation of opportunities and granting equal access to those opportunities to all the citizens. If you are a policymaker, you would require to develop citizen-centered policies. If you are an implementation agency, you need to find out a way to deliver more efficiently. And if you are a public service or delivery organization, you need to see whether the commitments about drinking water, sanitation, education, health, development, gender rights that we have made on international forums such as United Nations are being implemented or not. This is the future of governance, and this is your responsibility to equip yourself with skills that you need to work on for a more effective performance in public service delivery. I strongly believe in your capacity to bring change, and I strongly believe in Pakistan. This country has given us all that we want, and we should not forget that we have to give back. This will not happen until you believe in yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you believe in Allah, you will work hard and with honesty of the first rank. If you believe in yourself, you will respect your motherland. And if you have respect for this land, you will never allow its resources to be wasted through faulty and inappropriate decisions. You will never allow its people to suffer due to bad governance. You will never allow yourself to let your country down. Once again, please accept congratulations on successful completion of this course. We are so proud of you. We bid farewell from here. Wherever you would go, spread the message of love, peace, and prosperity. May Allah be with you all. Pakistan, Zindabad. Madhiha, I think you are mute. We could not hear you. Yes. Uh...
Thank you so much, sir, for your kind and enlightened opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now award the course certificates to the participants of the 30th MCMC. Dr. Adnan Majid, Deputy Director, Pakistan Baitul Mal. He has done MBBS and he is ultrasonologist. He is, his expertise are in HR management and coordination. Hafiz Ghulam Murtaza Javed sir, Deputy Director, Management Services Wing, Establishment Division. His expertise are in human resource management and restructuring of the federal government organizations. Mr. Malik Ishfaq Khan, Section Officer, Ministry of Finance. His expertise are in structural reforms and development assistance. Mr. Asif Ali Yasin, Deputy Director Elections in the Election Commission of Pakistan. His expertise are in training. Mr. Abdul Jabbar Khan, Deputy Director, National Accountability Bureau. He works in the accountability laws. Mr. Asad Zia, Additional Director Research, National Institute of Management Peshawar. He works in the fields of training, management, and team building. Mr. Bilal bin Jamshed, Deputy Director, National Accountability Bureau, Khaybar Pakhtunkha. His field of expertise are investigation and forensics. Mr. Fayaz Ahmed Bhattu, Director, HR Development, Capital Development Authority, Islamabad. He works in the human resource development and management. Mr. Iftakharuddin, Assistant Director General, Department of Communication Securities, Cabinet Division. He works in the development and modification of communication security systems. He did not adjust to the changing technology and changing environment, which others did. So Nokia became irrelevant with the passage of time. Now, if you go to the market, you don't hear about Nokia anymore. The similar thing is happened with uh, many of the automobiles of the US. Ford, General Motors, they used to lead auto industry in the US, but then the Toyota came. Toyota took over almost all the market share of the automobiles. Nobody could actually uh, compete with Toyota. Then what happened? In last couple of years, we have seen Tesla, a new technology came up. And you will be, some of you will be surprised to hear that no Tesla is the leading automobile in this global world. So anyone, so these are the two examples which might not be very pertinent to governance which we are talking about today but I will make a link and tell you that how they are relevant. Today, we have many ministries where, as the DG rightly pointed out, there are people who are generalists. I mean, if after graduation, you did your civil services exam and you join civil services, and then you are put in economic division, which you have no clue of, or if you are in information technology ministry, or in education department or health department, you are the secretary. You might, might be the administrative officer, you might be a very good deputy commissioner or a commissioner, but you might not be a good health official because being a secretary health, you might have to come up with the policies and the practices which are required by the health department. That was the change which Europe and the West brought around 20 years back. There are no more journalists like uh, I was going through uh, some readings on Pakistan and where do we, uh, we are still behind as compared to the other competitors. Our civil services exam hardly had changed. 
if you fail in the English essay, you fail the whole exam, you are no more there. You might be an excellent mathematician, you might be a wonderful in physics, or you have done graduation from London School of Economics and you're the best economist. But because you have failed in English essay, that does not allow you to qualify for the civil services. That is the basic, basic flaw I personally feel in our system, which has to change. If we are not going to change uh, right from the start, from the uh, examination and then moving on further to the departmental improvements, I personally feel that we will lag behind like Nokia. Nokia has diminished. We will diminish in our governance with every passing day. And as rightly said, and theoretical and empirical evidence from the past many decades shows that socioeconomic development is affected by the quality of governance and its institutions. If the institutions don't perform, you might have a wonderful policy, but that policy is not going to yield positive outcomes. You need to have a right people for the right job as mentioned by our prime minister, but I hope that he'll bring the right people in the remaining areas as well. There are certain areas which have already started showing some progress. And, and in this pandemic, while going through how the economies have badly performed, the biggest economy in the world is the US and, and you will be uh, surprised to hear that their growth was minus 4.3. Then UK minus 11.3, India our neighbor minus 9.6, Germany minus six and Japan minus 5.3. Why I'm telling you all these figures are that in our country, sometimes debates happen just for the political mileage or political scoring, point scoring. We are at minus 0 0.4. I'm not saying we performed very well, but at the same time, if you compare it with the world in this global village where we live, how did we perform? I would say we performed much, much better. And I'm sure there must be some good brains sitting behind making those policies, advising the prime minister to take certain uh, steps which can save the country like smart lockdown, which was highly appreciated by the World Health Organization. Then our uh, stimulus package of 1.2 trillion, which has helped the industry as well as the daily wages workers. These things are ultimately paving the way for the better economy. And World Bank, IMF, and all the big economic institutions are talking about that Pakistan will grow at the rate of 2% and 2% plus with all existing ills and odds we face today. The same governance, same PDM, Al-Shabaab threats, Sorry, I'm talking about Al-Shabaab. It's the Taliban threat in Pakistan because Al-Shabaab is in Somalia. So that, that is on my uh, tongue now because every day we talk about that. So we have the threat of Taliban. We have uh, these other uh, factors like recent days we have seen in Balochistan the killing of those Hazaras and then uh, the protest all over the country. Just imagine. Uh, why people don't go to the areas where there is less security? Because the businessmen want protection. People are afraid to go to Waziristan. People are afraid to go to uh, interior Balochistan, like this uh, recent incident. You know, these are the factors which basically guide the international investors. They are not done, I mean, the killing of 10 and 11, even one person is killed, that's painful. But what you need to think is, what are these uh, 
uh, elements achieving by doing such incidents, they propagate in the whole international media that Pakistan is not a safe place. And that's how they achieve their goal that the investors tend to stay away from Pakistan. So what is our primary role in our given capacity? I can tell you there is no country where military alone can win any war. Nowhere in the world uh, only the military operations could succeed. It's always supported, assisted, and guided by the civilian administration. We need to have a better rule of law. We need to have a better governance. We need to have economic institutions. We need to have peace building, conflict management, and a harmony between the provinces, between different linguistic peoples, like if Hazara community is in Kuwaita and then uh, Pashtuns are there, Baloch are there, if these people will not live in harmony, I can tell you there'll be hardly any economic growth, there'll be hardly any political stability in the, in the country and people are not going to come and invest in the country. So if you don't have investors, if you don't have your friends who can trust you that you can deliver, then believe you me, whatever policies government will make, they will not yield any result. You are the people on the ground who are going to implement the policies. If I'm Pashtun, like uh, Madiha told that I'm Dogar, and being a deputy commissioner in Sahiwal, which is my native town, I start including and bringing all the Dogars in the government jobs. And whether they are right or wrong, I start propagating their point of view. I start assisting them. Just imagine how others would feel. Marginalized in their own country, they will feel alienated. They will be feeling left alone. Just think, are we doing the same thing? in our given institutions, are we upholding the rule of law? Are we doing the justice when we recruit people? Or are we doing the favoritism? Are the promotions done based on merit? Are the political influencers, they make the change? There are people, all of you must be seeing that they are good in Hoshamad. So Hoshamdis are always uh, rewarded. Can we decide today and we promise with each other that we will make an effort to bring a change and that change will be from your insight. Nobody can force you for that change. And these are the teachings of our prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. We all talk about that we are leaders. Do we? Are we really the leaders? Because the leader is the one who shows example, who lead by example, and example is in every field. Is he truthful? Is he honest? Is he dedicated? Does he keep his personal agenda at the back and professional agenda ahead? Does he empower others? Like in your office, you come around 11 o'clock and then you expect your subordinate to come at nine. Maybe they are afraid from you and they'll come at nine, but will they perform those two hours when you are away? That's basically the example a leader has to show. If leader is honest, yes, that is a requirement. But is he going to have a continuous follow-up on the things? Honesty, coupled with competence, coupled with empowering his colleagues and treating them fairly, and then coming up with a vision and following up on his vision is the change. And when you make your decisions in life, when you think you have to send your kid to engineering school or medical college or 
when you think that you have money and you want to send your kid abroad, do you really consult people who are best in those fields? I'm sure you must have been. You must have been talking to 10, 20, 30 people that I want to send my son, tell me which university is good. Tell me which school is good. Should he go in a medical school or engineering? Should he do CSS or he should go, go to the uh, armed forces? We think a lot about our kids, about our families, but do we really think the same way where we work? Do we plan in the same manner? Or we are just doing as it is, routine work. We come to the office, we go back at five o'clock. Just ponder in the evening when you go back home and think that are we making any positive impact in this country? And if we lack certain skills, as Madiha mentioned in the start, I was in the army and I can narrate you one incident when I joined UN, it was the second month. And uh, here people call you with name, there is no Saab, there is no Sar, and there is nothing of that sort. A and the cleaner in my office, he came, he said, Osman, can you go out? I need 10 minutes to clean the office. And, and you know, I was shocked and my ears got red. Uh, being an infantry officer, I was not used to this kind of that. A sweeper will come and tell me that you should go out. And uh, my colleague, he was a British army, ex-British army officer. He could make out that, you know, I didn't like it and stuff. You know, he pulled me aside for a coffee and he spent 30 minutes with me. He said, you have to decide today whether you want to stay in the UN or you want to go back to where you came from. If you want to stay in the UN, Learn, learn the new norms and skills and the environment where you are. Otherwise, you will be the misfit in this organization. That was a piece of advice, I must say. Then I started learning the new skills. One, first I changed my behavior from a military man to a civilian. Secondly, I learned the skills which who are required in the UN. In your jobs, when you are performing, when you are doing your work, I'm sure with every passing day, there are new technologies, there are new skills. If you will not adjust with the new skills, you cannot move on. You cannot say that, you know, you are improving the governance. Basically, Today's governance is changing the office environment, changing your day-to-day -day work as per the changes which are emerging in the new world. But there are a few things which don't need these technologies that need change in the behavior. Are we kind with our subordinates? as we are kind towards our bosses. Mostly people say that, you know, this man is, you know, he's very bad, he's very moody, but are we showing the same modes to our bosses? Or we have those mood swings only when our juniors come to us? Think about that. You are the people of change, I believe. You 24 people from different organizations, from different institutions. When you go back tomorrow to your office, I'm not saying the first day after listening to my one lecture, there'll be change. The change will come from inside. What you personally believe and, and nobody can change anyone. Even a husband cannot change his wife after 30 years of time. <laughs> Mostly the husbands change gradually because wives keep telling you that you know you are not you are not what you were. So person changes when he starts believing that yes, this is what I should do.
And I would say that the belief, being the believers and being the follower of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, if we are kind, if we are honest, and if we really take care of our, our people who work with us and give them the due share, let me tell you, if you tell your subordinate that you are doing a great job, Believe you me, next day he'll come more motivated. Ask them if they have some personal problems, personal issues. The biggest dilemma of today's world in general and Pakistan in particular, we don't have dynamic organizational leadership. There might be a guy sitting on a post. He has no experience and clue. But he got that post because he was connected to the foreign minister or he was connected to the education minister. I know it's not in your domain, but whatever is in your domain, you can start practicing that. Give the ACRs based on the performance, not based on the favoritism. Don't look at that. This guy, he brings very nice mangoes from Multan for me. Or from Quetta, the nice apples are coming. Look at the performance of the individual and don't damage the carriers. Sometimes we become so egoistic. We forget about that how good this person was in his whole year. Maybe on some occasion he disagreed and now linking back to Nokia. You know, the people in Nokia did, did not disagree with their bosses. Whatever the bosses would say, they would say, yes, yes, yes. As compared to what happened in Apple, I studied in the US. That is an environment of challenging your teachers. They ask questions. They can say, no, I don't agree with that. And nobody take it bad. This yes boss culture will never allow us to bring the good governance in Pakistan are in our institutions. Please think over again, don't damage the carriers of your under commands when you are angry with them, do call them, talk to them, and believe you me, in their whole life, they will remember you. If I ask you today, how many people you remember out of your service of 20 years or 25 years? How many people do you really like? You will, will talk about one person or two person. You might have forgotten about the 20 person. Be that one person. When you leave that uh, office or institution, people should remember you that there was a guy who has actually made a change. There was a person who had uphold the integrity, honor, and professionalism while delivering, while performing his duties. This country has suffered a lot. Let's agree today. Let's promise that we will make an effort to bring a change. I was going through an article written by RDG uh, Paris, an amazing article, I must say, on governance. One of the best uh, information about the Pakistani governance system, I strongly believe, and I pray for him that the senior government officials should consider his suggestions and his approach seriously, because that can really bring change in the civil service, as well as in the overall improvement of the governance system in Pakistan. With that, I would end my today's talk. And once again, I would like to thank the organizers, the participants, uh, to invite me on this occasion. And uh, I'm sure we'll be in touch in future as well. Last element I just forgot before I conclude. Uh, in environment program, India aligned with the SDGs long ago. And you will not believe that they got millions of dollars aid from the UN and whereas we lag behind. Why I'm telling you this is because my wife worked for the UN Environment Program. And she used to tell me that Pakistani government is not forthcoming. 
Pakistani investor is not even lobbying for all these fundings. And there are many, many uh, conferences where Pakistan was not even represented. And then when some of our ministers would come, they would not even participate there. They will go on safaris, go here and there. So we have all those challenges. I'm sure with the new dynamic leadership and with the zeal as shown by DG, we'll be able to find a better Pakistan, better institutions. And I'm sure you are taking away from this course under his leadership, few things which can help you in your future career. Thank you very much and Allah Hafiz. Thank you so much, sir. We are grateful for your very kind insight and giving us time today for, from your busy schedule. Uh, the requirements that you pointed out for better harmony and better service, service delivery are noted down. And we are all present here working in various government organizations have the best forum to promote harmony and better service delivery. Sir, we look forward to listen to you in person at STI in the future, inshallah. Thank you so much again for your thoughtful and thought-provoking insights and words. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll conclude the ceremony by thanking Director General Secretariat Training Institute for his guidance, my colleagues at Secretariat Training Institute, for their continuous help and their support and their participants to complete the course with interest and dedication. I would also urge the participants to remain in touch and to keep coming to STI for any further training that is on our annual training program and for a cup of tea also if you wish to do so. Thank you so much for your support and your help and dedication in learning new things during this course. Thank you so much. Allah bless. God bless all of you with health and success in our lives. Thank you. <laughs>